Hello there YouTube. This is video number one of four and um, this is eventually what we're going to get down to. That is the engine. Can you tell that you can see through it from underneath? Yeah, you can see all the way through it. So that's how far we're going to take it. I haven't taken the crank out. Um, if I do, I'll just make that as a separate video because it should be, it's a really important part of this whole thing. So, you know, the taking out and the putting in of the crankshaft, maybe, you know, if it, if it comes down to that, um, we'll do that. Now, uh, I, right now it would be like five videos or even six videos, so I'm trying to condense things down as best I can. I made it a challenge to get it down to four, so I got to get going. Um, I want, I don't want them down. I, these videos have to be less than an hour. I hope so. That's what I'm doing. Oh, you know, before I before I go any further, I want to see where I'm at, you guys. Wow. Hey, I'm at 33 subscribers. Wow. You know, that's like. Four new subscribers since my last video. So that's awesome. I hope you guys are just like sharing it and telling others because I'm going to need some support. As you can tell, I, I need some help. If anybody wants to donate, go click on my about, uh, my about part, you know, in the YouTube thing. I mean, I know people give, you know, when they feel good. So I'll feel good <laughs> if you give because... This is going to kill me. You'll see by the by series number four why we're all the way down to this point and maybe even further. So you'll learn. All right. So I want to thank my new subscribers, you know, for joining and to all my subscribers. You know, you're, it's going to be worth it. I mean, if this is what you want to see, it's going to be worth it. So I want to thank you guys again for your support. I mean, even if it's just watching my videos, I hope you get something out of it. Um, this is how I did things. It may not be the right way, but it's how I did it. So uh, I'm going to list right here some of the things that, uh, all the things that will be covered in this video. It's also in the description down below. And I made, I think, I don't know yet, I've never done this before. But, you know, where you can have hyperlinks within the video, a timeline, so you can click to the different sections that you want to click to. I, I'm doing this for my own benefit, really. I mean, the main reason why I went on YouTube is I needed a place to store all my video footage. Because <laughs> if, if I die during this process, the guy who comes along is going to have to ha have somewhere to start. And I'm going to give him everything right he'll have everything so that's one of the things so these are really really detailed because I made them for me all right every single nut and bolt I mean I didn't really show you every crank and turn I try to I'm trying I'm getting better as I go I'm already talking too much but I I made sure that everything that was important or if anything changed or anything I stopped and make sure that video was was presented so I can go back my video footage and put this back together. I think if anyone can go through my videos from taking the engine out all the way to tearing the engine completely down, who's never done it before, because I've never done it before, but I feel that you'll be better than me because you're going to learn what I should have learned. <laughs> this is not to take it apart. Right? We'll, we'll get to it. All right, let's see. Uh, oh, oh, oh. If you see a problem or I'm doing something wrong or uh oh Tony you shouldn't have done that make a comment and uh, break it to me easy uh, you know I want anyone who's watching this to know if I did something wrong you know they should know too right so if in the comments is where these things should go so the order of the events of tearing this engine down is not necessarily how you might do it it's how I did it, and it's, it's, it's only because of the rabbit hole. I just followed things along. So, you know, I pulled the small pump off, maybe in the middle of the video, where that could have been done in the very beginning, right? Just dismantling, or whatever, because you know you're going to be breaking it down this far. So the order is not necessarily fantastic, but 
uh, it's how I did it, and uh, I broke it down this far. So, uh, uh, anyone who's watches these videos should also know that it all started from nothing more than just a simple rear seal leak, and I was having the transmission being rebuilt. That's it, a rear seal leak, and here it is. And you'll see at the end why it's just oh, <laughs> but I'm still in good spirits. I promised everybody in 2022 I would be in good spirits. Well, this uh, this video actually picks up on the very day. Then I pull the engine. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut right to that. I just wanted to touch base on this uh, you know, top dead sensor. So you can see how close it is to the stand and all that. So I, I actually removed it already and I just didn't get it on film. So I just wanted to let you know that's just a, just a 10 millimeter. And it's just a bracket. So, you know, I didn't know if you could take it off or not. So I, after I got it out, I decided to give it a shot. I had already taken it out, but we're gonna, I'll go ahead and I'll loosen that one. All right, then I want to mention, once you get it off, um, what these things look like. So. You see that it's got like a little split. So I guess these are the kind of inserts they use for this. So I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put these screws back in, or the bolts, I should say. So I don't lose them. Alright, now we're gonna grab this other one. Now we can actually remove it. So there's three different ways you can remove that stupid cable. So you can either take it off of here, which is what they recommend when you're when you read the manual, you take it off here. I can't get this one broke. Or you can take it off of these two screws or the way that I did it and you just take it off on the end. You guys remember how I did that? So now I'm going to set this aside. So now before we get started, we know that we're going to be um, removing that pan. So if you notice, the pan is attached to this bracket here. This is for the AC, okay? So we talked about the AC before. So when I took it out, they had this bolt, and this bolt, and this bolt. They didn't have this one in, I don't believe. And they didn't have that one in. That's a real hard one to get to from what I understand. And they didn't have the one that goes on the front here for on that other plate or whatever, which I don't have. But this needs to be detached here. So, and I think that's all you have to do, but I'm gonna probably take that whole plate off because I wanna get behind there and look behind that you know, because you can't really see inside there. I want to see if there's any main... I want to see how that front seal looks. And then also, you have um, this dipstick, you know, for the oil. So, I'm not sure exactly how that comes off right now. I'm not too worried about it. But the pump, this pump needs to come off because you, you'll notice the pump is attached to the pan so I'm gonna go ahead and just remove the pump that'll lighten things up a little bit we'll have to disconnect this right here this is simple and then this hose will come with it and then this whole thing will be off and this will all be off so that's what I'm gonna do before we start cleaning that engine and inspecting it further okay so I believe I'm shooting this pretty much head-on but if you'll notice the center of the crank you see that the center of the crank and the center of the engine stand right center to center is roughly about three and a half inches taller I'm above 
the crank with about three and a half inches, okay? And it's still really top heavy. Just look at it head on here. Um, the lighting is not how I really like it, but it is just enormous on the top. I'll get a better angle from inside when we get it inside, but you see how massive it is on the top, even though I'm that much higher above the crank. With the heads off, fine. If you keep the pan on, you know, I'm going to be removing the pan. And you see, I mean, the pan starts here at the bottom of, of, of our thing there. So all of that's above it. So I, if I turn that around and then take that pan off, <laughs> right? It's gonna really, I gotta get the pan back on <laughs> so I can help turn it over. But that's my point. I, I, I don't know how you balance these things properly, but uh, I greased that spindle, right? I greased this all up. And um, it's hard. It is really hard to turn that engine. I guess, you know, maybe that's how it is with others. I don't know. But I'm getting ready to work on the other side. I'm going to start with those 13 millimeter up on top there. Got this one on top. Got one here. And then, we don't take this off, so that's fine. That's all part of the bracket, so then we're going to come on this side. Okay, so on this side, we've got uh, these two 10 millimeter right here. And this 13, um, but you'll notice it's slotted, so maybe just loosen it, if anything. And then I'm going to take it off on this hose up here try to so and that's just a simple pinch type of clamp we'll just pinch that I'm gonna go ahead and loosen these this these 10 millimeters first thirteen thing here I think we can oh boy I'm gonna need I can do it there we go. That's off. Uh, now, if we're lucky and we get our bolts off, we should be able to twist this. All this is free. Finish taking out the tens. We'll put that back in a moment. But it's just a 10 millimeter and a flat washer. We'll see if they're the same size. No. Well, yeah, I guess they are. Yep, they are. The two 13s that are in the front here. They have a flat washer. There's that one. That one came on the bottom part. And we'll see what comes out here on the top. You can see it's loose, so we're on the right track. Okay, that's the bolt that came out of there. So let's see if it's the same size. And they are. They are the same size. All right, so now we should be able to swing that and make sure our electrical is free here. So if we're lucky, we can just take it off of here, but you know, we're not gonna be that lucky. That hose is pretty much as hard as a rock. Don't want to tear it, but it's going to tear anyways. I can see that. That thing is just so hard. Well, that's fine. We knew we were going to have to replace that hose. We should replace all those hoses. That kind of oil that you see there, if any, 
is not from a seal leak. Not that I would say. I'm not an expert, obviously. But uh, you would see more than that. This is just surface type stuff. I am mainly documenting this for myself. So I'm on the rear of the engine. And this is that hose, you know, that went into the firewall. I finally got it off of here. All right, so this is what the hose looks like. It's got these things there on it. Right, I'm going to stick it in the box. This box for now. Things are starting to clean up. Look at this. We can even take this one. Do you remember what that one is? This is the one that goes down to the transmission. Do you remember this one? This is damaged right here. It's kinked. That's relatively easy to fix. Label it as a transmission. How's that? Well, I'll work it. And I'm going to put that in that box too. Okay? I want to document, you know, this is, this goes on to here, right? And then there's a vacuum hose, and then this goes on to your breather, or your your air filter. So, you have this line, and if you follow it, you see it, it goes right in here. Right, just underneath this. So it goes right down there and goes through and comes up just on the other side, right? So there it is. It goes down and then it comes up right here. See where that is? So it just went through there, up here, and then into this. Okay. So, what do we want to call this line? <laughs> I'm going to just call this breather. I mean, we know what it is, right? Call that breather. I'm going to disconnect it here. I want to make note of something. Let's see if this camera can really show it. But there is this bolt right here. And then you have this but this rubber needs to fit on there but it's too thick really i mean i can see what they did they damaged it but i think this should be a lower a lower profile screw it's it's too high it should be a little bit lower profile so then this hose could fit more easily on there because i i can't you can't push that on there. You can't get it past that that bolt, really. I mean, it came off because I pulled it off, but I think they loosened it. You know, the that actual whatever the heck that is. I forgot. I I knew what it was, but I forgot. So I'm just going to cover that hole for now, but I want to figure it out. Before we can take that pan off, we need to uh, release our dipstick bracket here. It does have on the rubber grommet here, it is open. So you might be able to just pop that off of there, but I think I'm just going to take this uh, 13 millimeter here. <coughs> there is a washer. It looks like a very clean bolt. Now I'm going to take this and just swing it off to the side here and then see if I can get this bracket off because I still I still kind of want to use that as my you know part of this because this is all torqued and everything. So if I can take this off of here, I would like to. This is how you do it. That's a little trick, huh? Interesting. Now I'll put that bolt back in because that's our lift point. So um, I just slid this thing down the, the tube until I found a place where I could get it 
off and then I turned it upside down so it's pointing out of the way. That gives us a nice, this will allow our pan to come out quite easily. Plus, I don't want to forget, you know, that I really need to tighten this down. <laughs> you know, I don't want to forget about that because that is a, that's our only lifting point on the front of this engine. So we, we've secured this back so we know we're okay there. We're not going to cause any injuries. Um, now we need to probably flip the engine around if that's the next thing we want to do. We also need to probably should take off the valve covers, look down everything, check the lobes on those as well. So, I mean, you know, that's something we can do. But uh, I'm really interested in flipping this thing over and taking the pan off. I already know that the pump, or not the pump, but the oil level sensor leaked. It's loose and everything, you'll see. And uh, I, I want to be able to look up in the front there and see the guides and all that. So I think that's where we should go next. So before I flip this uh, engine over, I'm going to take this off and make sure I have all the oil out of it, right? And then the bowl, because it's been sitting here now. So maybe there's some oil in there. Um, and then I'm going to tilt the engine at a 45 and then we're going to open up the drain plug and make sure we got everything out of here. So, Alright, so that's what I'm going to do right now. Drip pan all ready to go. 14 millimeter hex, right? Just like we used when we drained it the first time. Let's see how anticlimactic this is going to be. <laughs> that's probably nothing. Alright. I was not going to take this thing off because, you know, there's a little something but we are getting a little bit of that last stuff so I'm gonna let that go ahead and drain these are the tools I'm gonna to use so there's a couple of bolts on there that's uh, 13 millimeter I might break it with the with this first and then there are five millimeter uh, the majority of all the five millimeters you can get to no problem right except for up in here so in order to get up by that in the front there I'm just going to use a quarter inch and it should fit perfectly so the engines upside down and what I did is I went ahead and I also marked how many holes we have I also marked here on a box the same holes okay these are the four that are in the front, and then there's like 11 on each side. But you see the ones with X's? That means I have a missing one. Okay, so part of that has to do with, um, I noticed this one is uh, the same down here. I think those are for the brackets that uh, hold those things. I think they're called banjos that go on to the transmission. So that's just for the brackets of the transmission, I believe. And then that one there is a missing one. But, you know, when I was flipping the engine over, huh, I think that's what came out. So if, I mean, that came out with a washer. So if these all have washers, then that's probably what that is. That'll be the missing one. But I just want to keep everything in the exact same order. Then I know if something's stripped, I can look at it. I know where it came out of or whatever. Um, I put everything back the same way. I know it's probably overkill, but you know, when you don't know what you're doing and you've never done it before, you think about, well, wow, how can I help prevent me from messing something up? So that's what I did. I'm going to stick each one of these into this hole, into their corresponding hole. So I just drilled the hole out so I can stick them in there. That's it. Then I'll set it aside. This is only four can go in the front, so you already know. As long as you just take them out and stick them in your box, it should come out just perfect, I hope. I don't know what's... I mean, what's under this? Oh, I'm scared to death. I've been walking around this engine going, oh, I'm really scared. I'm also scared when I take that off, I'm not going to be able to turn this engine around. I mean, it's a beast. It really is. I don't care who you are. I mean, I'm ha I have help, and this is a beast. And I have it way centered. I mean, there's your... Here's your crank. Look where I have it. And I still, man, I mean, I can't. 
it seems like it's way too top heavy to me. But we'll find out. We'll see if we can flip it back over because once that's off, I still need to kind of jack it up. I got to take this cover off. So I want to hang it. But I want to look inside because if there's a lot of things we have to do, you know, like the front cover and all that other stuff, I'm just going to leave this cover on <laughs> and just uh, see what all we got to replace. So we're going to do that. <clears throat> now the reason why I chose these particular steps is once I open this up it might expose that we have to take off the front cover front timing cover right we might have to change those guides a lot of the guys say in the 560s this thing's going to last forever the lower guides um, but I don't know we'll see I think we can see them when we take this off so I thought that should be the first thing we should do. And then we can turn it over and take off the valve cover gas uh, covers if we want. But I'm sure I'm just gonna do this in time lapse, so I'll just loosen it. That's that one. I should note that I cleaned out every one of these heads as best I could. I do all these things by hand. I know guys take impacts and stuff, but I want to kind of feel, you know, what did the last guy do? Looks like we're going to use that smaller one to get inside of this too. Tight. Right in there though. I just want to feel these. I like to feel them with an open end wrench like that. Wow, it's pretty tight, huh? Okay. Don't feel bad. Don't forget the two little ones you have on the on the side over here. kind of loose. That's interesting. Yeah, they have washers. Alright, so that's going to go on the back. There's the other one. There's oil all over this one. I want to point that out. That thing there is uh, covered in oil. It's another reason why I'm keeping these this way. So that first one was dry. This one has oil. This one feels dry. It is dry. It's a little wet, but I mean nothing major. This is completely dry. You know, I like bolts that when I loosen them, then they come out. I don't like them when they're hard coming out. This has got some white stuff all over it. Let's see what this is. It's probably nothing. At least it's dry. But you can see this white stuff. But I kind of feel, you know, certain jobs you probably shouldn't do underneath the car because you miss things. Or you cross thread or something like that. This one here looks good. It's shorter. That's the bigger one that came out. And then now we're into these shorter ones. Where is it? There it is. So. This has white stuff on it as well. It's one of the longer five millimeters, but it's for the most part I'd say it's dry. 
So after the long one on that side, it was skipped. So all these are coming out dry. And then remember, we got to skip one after that. It's this one, and then it skips. It's still going to have to use a an Allen wrench. It looks like can't get by it, but at least you can break it with that. What I don't like the most about this is that it's mine. That's probably the thing I hate the most. If it was somebody else's and they were paying me to take all this grief and agony and stuff that I do. You know, it's only because I couldn't find anybody else to do it really. Ridiculous. This is going to be a. It's really dumb, right? <laughs> I mean, this is this really what people go through in a shop? Really? Why? I would not be a mechanic by trade. Because this is craziness, and, and you can't afford to be a mechanic, it's too expensive. Right? It's not like the place you work for is going to buy you all these special tools. They might buy certain tools, but not all your, not all your tools to do things like this. you got to buy off a truck sometimes and you're in the middle of the job, right? You can't leave the workplace to go buy a special tool. When I was a kid, the very first car I bought was a Volkswagen, 1964 Volkswagen, and I bought it at a junkyard. And I would hang out at that junkyard. I was 16 years old. I would hang out at that junkyard on the weekends. And uh, kind of learned how things came apart and everything. Right? That's why I'm really good at taking things apart. I just don't know how to put them back together. I took the 64 and I had it completely disassembled, every single bit of it. Had no engine, but it was all together. I completely rebuilt the whole front end, you know, and then I dropped it, you know, which you normally do as a young kid. And, uh, but it had the nice flat windshield. And there we go. What do you know? Looks like there's a little bit of compound of some sort, possibly. That's the second one from the... Then I bought myself a Volkswagen engine at a junkyard. Same guy, I think. Um, what I did on that thing, though, I, I completely tore it down. I put case savers in everything. I don't know what they call them today. But, you know, because these aluminum engines, man, you see what happens. Every single bolt, I mean, if you do anything out of spec, you might as well just throw your crap away. Because that's how this aluminum stuff works. You know, and I put in uh, rocker rollers and stuff like that. You know, I took that one all the way down, machined it, you know, went to a machine shop and they did all that. But if I remember right, I lapped the valves myself. I did all that as a kid and I never really have done it since. Um, my dad took that car out once and I, I didn't know, you know, we lived in the mountains at the time. We just got, just moved up to the mountains from, from California. So, it, you know, I put in all the suspension stuff, you know, Coney shocks and, you know, anti sway I, I could, no matter what I did in that car, you could not flip it. You, there's no way you could roll that car. I have taken it at extreme high speeds and just turn the wheel. It's just like a go-kart. The tighter it is, it just sucks it right to the ground, is how it worked. That was an amazing vehicle to drive. Nothing I've ever driven like it. I'm sure a 911 is probably pretty close though, but I've never driven one. But uh, that Volkswagen was like that, and then my dad took it to work, and he liked racing it, you know, around the corners as well. And I didn't know at the time that when you're going around like that, your oil is slushing back and forth 
in your pan and uh, if it's not designed for that you can have it dry out when you go around the corner so that's what ended up happening and blew up that engine and then I never really had that car run again <laughs> I mean that's that's what happens to me in, in cars I guess when I touch them gosh this is horrible you know I'm taking I'm thinking I'm supposed to I'm gonna take this off anyways but you know I'm scared to death to do it I'm scared to death to do it I mean do I have to line something up is the timing gonna go off I don't know anything about what I'm doing guys I don't think I should be doing this but I am right I mean who else is gonna do it nobody I know Plenty of people will exchange it for me and put in a new engine in my car. Right? They'll do that. But they don't actually rebuild engines. They don't actually rebuild transmissions. They send all their transmissions to Sun Valley out there. The same people I sent mine to. That's where everybody sends their stuff. Even dealers. I mean, there's guys that's willing to take things apart, but you know what? I see them taking things apart, and I see them putting it together, and I see everybody do it differently. All right, we got that one out. It's nice and dry. Obviously, you could make a tool, but I don't know, you know, what tool would be better, really, than a 5 millimeter panel wrench. It's obvious. I think this... This probably this inch has been rebuilt before. Probably only has five thousand miles on it, for all I know. You know, another reason why we're doing this is because there was an excessive amount of silicone that was used on the back cover. I mean, I've driven it eight hundred miles since then, so it didn't have any issues as far as I know. But as a safety precaution, and we got to take the cover off now, anyways. Because that seal did spin off. All right, so now you see why I'm so cautious and why I'm confused on what method to use. Nice and dry. Yeah, under the car you would do this, right? You know, the manual I have is just terrible. I mean, I don't know if you should be doing this with just this stupid thing that I... I mean, there's a link in the, the to the manual that I'm using, but I don't know if it's safe to use that or not. Oh yeah, see I did take out the oil filter. So you could do this when I covered it all up with a rubber glove. Works pretty good. I think this thing's been done before. Yeah, they have some kind of a white compound. I don't know what it is. If you guys know what people do, tell me. I don't know what it is. But somebody's sticking something in here. How do you get a proper torque setting when you put anything on there? Torques is for dry unless you have torque settings for wet. And we got one more. And then the battle starts. That one's clean. So there you are. All marked out in the front of the front of it. To the back of it. All right, so that's a missing one. That's a missing one, and that's the missing one. Other than that, those are the two on the rear, and these are the four in the front. So we're all laid out. Now all we have to do, now that we have our thing released here, is somehow this whole thing will come popping up. So <laughs> we'll we'll see. But I'm going to take a quick break. All right, so now we have all our all our screws out. We have this disconnected. It's not connected to anything. We have all our screws out. Right? Bolts. We have our our two in the back out that connects to that back plate. And we've got our four here in the front up in here. They're all out. So now you know it's not going to just like lift up right it's just not going to now you notice I have uh, 
this little guy on there. I don't know, you know. I can hear it pop. Did you hear that? Yep. She popped all right, and I hardly, hardly put any pressure on that, really. It was very light. There it is. Oh yeah, she's sealed. All right, here I've never, never saw what's in. Well, I've seen it, but I mean I've never seen it. I gotta turn this so I can make sure that we're all seeing the same stuff here. So we're ready to take this off and see what's inside. Oh my goodness. Alright, the moment of truth, guys. We'll see how I did. Alright, now. Alright, so. Now, let's look inside. We'll look at this together, but. You know, that is darn clean, I think. From what I've seen on the internet, that looks pretty clean. Oh my goodness, so that's what it looks like inside of an engine. Ooh. I'm a little nervous. Let's see how you guys feel about it. Alright, so there's our timing chain, or fuel, uh, oil pump chain I should say. It feels pretty tight. It's got its own guide. We're going to have to, you know, look in things a little bit closer with a, another light. I have an inspection light. Look at this wire. Um, I ordered this, I think. <laughs> uh, but that wire is completely deteriorated and I you know I think this thing was leaking um, it's like super loose and there's oil around it all there's oil all the way around that so that thing was leaking Le oh look at it look how Mercedes does stuff Whew, this is cool let me get my light all right let's see what it looks like down inside here look at those cylinder walls You know, I can't see all of them without turning it, but we could certainly turn it. And I, you know, from what I'm seeing, I, I don't see any grooves or anything, so oh my goodness, that's a good sign. Um, I see some of that silicone. This is what we were worried about right here. You see that? If that gets into this pump, into this sump, oh! Uh-oh, guys. Look what's inside. Yep. Something's inside. So, we've got a busted guide. Somewhere. Or, it had gotten broken before. So, we're going to go find out because I don't really know how this works. But we can, I can get a better light. I probably can't do it with this camera. But we, we certainly have, we discovered something. <laughs> oh, I knew it, right? We knew it. Oh, we knew this was going to happen. Ah, oh, do we just tear this whole thing down all the way? Look at that crank. Oh boy. Well, we don't want anything to fall into this engine, so I want to clean the pan. You can see all the silicone that's on that. And none of that area needed to be sealed at all. So we want to make sure, at least I do, 
when I do it that I do not try to seal this edge because it doesn't seal to anything. This is inside the engine. All that stuff will end up right inside of your your filter, which, you know, we already have something in there, right? There it is. And we're going to look at that. All right? You can see it. Whoop, 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 whoop. Problem. But that's, uh, yeah, so I probably have a, a guide, you know, that broke. So most likely that cover is going to come off, the front timing chain cover. Um, we're going to go ahead and probably replace the lower guide, you know, and reseal that. We already have a pump. Uh, so then the heads have to come off and... So, yeah, it's, we're tearing it all down. That's what we're going to do. Now we're tearing it all down. So, this is the oil pickup right here. So, I want to... I think there's just a couple of pieces in there. So, I thought I'd try to take it out with this. I, that's why I covered all this, just in case. You know, I don't want to drop anything into the engine. There's nothing else in there. But there is a little bit of silicone. That's because of that back thing. Removed. I see some other stuff. See? <clears throat> that is silicone. That is what you don't want. So that's what came out of it. And here's the other one. I just want to get it removed from here because I don't want it falling into the engine if I can help it. But I mean these are the reasons why you know why I'm so cautious before I do anything, I ask, I try to do it right the first time. I've turned the engine on to a 45, so when I start trying to peel this stuff off, um, it falls away from the engine rather than into the engine. Um, but I'm going to try to scrape all this stuff off. And uh, try to make sure I don't get anything inside of anything. It probably doesn't matter. I'll probably end up having to tear the whole engine down. You know how it is. Um, I don't want to use anything that's going to hurt anything. So I have this scrub brush at some point. Um, these little plastic razor things. They're not that great. Um, these are just, you know, whatever. Little tools. This will probably end up being the one that's the best. Uh, I'm going to... Soak some of it with some WD-40, let it set for a while. I have some brake clean, and really that's about all I'm going to use and try to get it all cleaned up. First, spray it with some WD-40. A little something I want to document. It's just a plug. Right? I just wanted to document that, you know, they're blocked off in the gasket. Okay. Just wanted to make note of it. You know that cheap plastic that you can buy at the hardware store? You know it's got this little plastic film that's on there that you can peel off. Um, and, and it's impossible to cut. It just shatters and all that kind of stuff. 
Well, that seems to work pretty good. Just and you can sharpen your tool <laughs> simply by breaking it off, and then you have another tool. Uh, I... All right, I think I've pretty much got this cleaned up. I also uh, cleaned inside the holes. So, you know, I didn't clean up this back one because that back cover plate's coming off. Then anything else? This is the front cover. I went ahead and cleaned the front cover and the holes and everything as well, but it might be coming off because we did find stuff in the, in the filter. So, <clears throat> I wanted to mention something here. This is going to take me forever and a day to complete. You can see I've got a small section done. You can see there's no scratches. Okay. Um, but this is all put on, they put it on with Permatex, obviously. I mean, it has to be. It, it has to be as hard and as solid as this is on there. Um, but I want you to see that prior to installation, so this is the manual and this is for the 107 model. Prior to installation, use grease to attach new gasket to the oil pan. It doesn't say Permatex. I know, guys do it. But then you have to spend a week cleaning the thing off. And I'm telling you, I'm not going to use a, a razor blade. I'm just using pieces of plastic that is definitely softer than this. I cannot scratch it with this, so thank goodness for that. I've been working on this pan for hours and hours and hours and hours. The guy that put this gasket on used a ton of Permatex. Alright, for the most part, I believe I have it all cleaned off. Um, the only thing I used was pieces of plastic, so no matter how bad I wanted to use a razor blade, I didn't. Now this is just what I'm cleaning out of these holes. <laughs> you know, I mean, this is Permatex, like I've never seen anything Permatex before. Every single hole's basically covered with it. I thought it was weird when the screws just keep, they just seem hard to get out. It's just full of crap. I feel like all of these these things are getting stripped out. They they can't this this case can't support the weight of the engine. I can tell they're, it's full of sealant. I mean, I can see it in there even. So far, they're the same length. So far, they're all the same length. Actually, those are shorter. All three of those are shorter, which means this one's shorter. Yep, that's a shorter one. That's a long one. Long one. Long one with gallons of sealant. I don't know if you can see that. That's also a long one. See? You just move it. Alright. There's that. It's off. 